Hello, welcome to 8.9 News. I'm Finn Locustain. An innovative, downloadable graphic comic based in the Stroud District has been released with the aim of inspiring a new generation of environmental managers. The Sound of a River was written by Chris Utley and illustrated by Joe McGee. Chris Utley is the Stroud Valley's Natural Flood Management Officer. I asked him why he thought of using a comic book to tell the story of natural flood management. Ever since I started this job, I've always advocated the power of storytelling. Mm. Um, and the, you know, we've, we, we've, we've been looking to work with creatives and artists for the whole of the project. So we made some films. We've commissioned some more films with the Countryside and Community Research Institute. Um, I've commissioned a poet to write a couple of poems. Um, and and it, it this just happened along, to be honest, Finlow. So we got sent an opportunity to to bid for the funding. It's EU funding. Mm-hmm. And so it needed to be led by someone with an EU passport. Mm-hmm. And um local artist who I know, Joe McGee, uh, has got an Irish passport. And so I, I kind of half jokingly said to him, How do you fancy doing a comic, Joe? And uh, and it went from there. So so you know it's it's just a different way of communicating with with people on what is quite a difficult you know kind of can be quite a technical subject. And um, it's great that you found a workaround so that you're still able to benefit from European funding. Yeah, and that, actually, they've just the, the the funders have just commissioned a second round, and because we've rejoined the Horizon mm. uh, European Horizon um, project, so the big science project. People in the UK can now bid into the same, the same fund. So yeah, it was it was a it was a useful workaround, let's say. In the story, you talk about healthy and unhealthy rivers. What's the difference? I, th- I think there's a lot of um, misunderstanding, or not, not so much misunderstanding, but kind of lack of lack of understanding about the full the full range of things that our watercourses and rivers need to be to be healthy. You know, to and by healthy, I mean. Um, Plenty of water of good quality, supporting a big, wide range of, um, of of an ecosystem, right through from kind of plants, algae, insects, invertebrates, birds, fish, mammals. So, so it's about looking at um, at the the kind of the whole river, not just the quality of the water inside it. That's got a lot of press mm-hmm. recently um, around sewage, but the amount of water. Uh, and then for our story, importantly, the shape of the river, mm. you know, the actual form of the system that that water is moving through. So, and so you, like, just, you, know, just, like, yeah. you can just describe that because you for people who haven't yet seen the comic, the difference that you're sort of illustrating uh, through the story between a healthy and unhealthy river. Yeah, well, we're, you know, our, our, our countryside, our landscape is full of what what we think of as being quite natural rivers but but we forget that like everything else they've been they've been adapted and modified by our ancestors to to do certain things and the most common type of change to our rivers is they've been made deeper straighter and people have tried to stop water from coming out onto the banks so so you know it's not natural to stand on a bank and look down into the bottom of a ditch and see some water you know that water should be level with the top of the bank there should be varieties of flows there should be pools and riffles there should be deep bits shallow bits some gravels some mud some silt you know it's it's like lots of things in nature it me it, it's a we need diversity and rivers are no different you did a diversity of 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 micro habitats within a river and I think that's a, a key word as well, isn't it? Habitat is sort of understanding that a river is not just a living thing in its own right, but it supports all of these different habitats at so many different stages throughout the watershed, from the source down to the sea, uh, and, and supports the life and biodiversity uh, throughout that uh, that journey. Yeah, and, and if you look at um, you know rivers across the globe, they're, they're not only important for transporting water and nutrients down to the sea but the other way around as well so you know these vast migrations of salmon that we see bringing those kind of huge amounts of nutrient into what are relatively nutrient poor environments you know the mountain areas are pretty nutrient poor and and you know in a uk context or european context 
think about eels. You know, we lost mm. 95 to 99 percent of our real population. Just think of the sheer biomass mm. of of animal life that's gone from that system with its energy and its ability to affect all the other things that live there. One of the key themes in the story is sound. What can you tell from the sound of a river? I mean, a long time ago, and I can't remember who said it to me. It may have been a farmer. It may have been someone just kind of, uh, uh, you know, like a, a throwaway comment said, no, you can hear a healthy stream. Mm. And and what they meant by that was it's just, um, it's that contrast of flows. So if you think about when you're standing next to a river um, and if you can hear water, then it means there must be a movement of water somewhere. So you know, not so much a waterfall, but maybe some rapids, some pools. There's water washing around rocks. Um, you can hear if there's vegetation, the vegetation on the side of the river. So it's the it's really the kind of the combination of sounds. Now, of course, I'm not implying that just because you can hear a river that makes it healthy, but it's just. It's just that, you know, like a lot of these it's kind of um, sayings, it's a key indicator, yeah. And I, I was really taken, I was listening to um, something on the, the radio, uh, you know, months ago about a, a Polish sound recordist who's who's blind. And she she's recording forest sounds in Poland and sounds of rivers and, you know, sounds of ecosystems and helping people kind of explore those ecosystems with their eyes closed, you know, can completely through the medium of sound. And it is fascinating what you can hear when you sort of really focus and tune in. Chris, your flood mitigation approach has been hugely successful in Stroud, with around about a thousand small watershed interventions having a dramatic impact on the town's resilience to extreme weather. How have you managed to get so many land managers involved? What do you think the secret of your success is in mobilising so many people? Well, I mean, in some ways it's simple. <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, it's a it's an uncluttered, uh, flexible, straightforward approach. So you know we're not we're not seeking, I guess, to change the whole farm. We're not seeking to to undertake dramatic reinventions of farming systems. It's a local project. Um, we I spend a lot of time. I'm available to talk to people. We're opportunistic. I never, I never say no. So, you know, if a farmer or someone gets in touch and says, look, I just want to plant a few trees, I'll always turn up. You know, I'm not looking for grand visions of um, of flood reduction. But those conversations start. Um, and, of course, it's, you know, we offer to pay for the work, so that's important. Um, we'll manage them. Uh, we'll help in their implementation. I'll employ the farmer or the landowner to actually do the works for us as well as a preference to um, to other contractors. So, so you know, it's hard to pin your pin down to a single thing, but I think just telling telling a good story, being flexible, having a simple approach, a uh, simple message, uh, but well told goes a long way. That was Chris Utley from Stroud District Council. More news on our website, 8.9.com. That's all for now. We're back soon. Thanks for watching.